As a scientist, you need a laboratory, and Mount St. Helens is a field laboratory, a natural laboratory, where you can go and you can look at the rocks and can interpret the history, and then you can use that information to forecast future eruptions. Many of our colleagues from around the world have more frequent eruptions than we do at Mount St. Helens, and so then bringing them here, we learn from them, and going to their countries, we learn from them so we can apply those, those same, that same information that in the United States for evaluating our not, not that much, less. We have people here um, this week, actually for the last couple of weeks, from all around the globe, from the extent of Papua New Guinea in, the, uh, in, in Asia, Southeast Asia, all the way to Colombia and Peru, a uh, number of countries in Latin America. Now we've come together and we've gone to Mount St. Helens again because it's that natural laboratory. And what I mean by that is that St. Helens, we have a remarkable detailed history of its eruptions. We go in the field, we do dirty work, we dig holes, we look at the layers, we get really down, down with a paintbrush and clean off the layers and we look at and we interpret what those things mean in terms of explosivity of the past eruptions, frequency of those past eruptions, and therefore use that data then to project and to forecast in the future. Both high topography and low topography. So we've been running this program for over 20 years exclusively on the big island of Hawaii where the students study Kilauea volcano in Mauna Loa. But a few years ago, we talked with VDAP about how wonderful it would be if the students could come to look at Mount St. Helens because this volcano is much more similar to the ones they have back home that have eruptions that are violent and produce pyroclastic yeah. density yeah, currents. Right. They taught us uh, all of the method, all of the, the basic from each method of monitoring volcanoes, and um, I don't get that when, when I answer. So basically I have to learn by myself in the office. I, I was involved because I am, uh, so actually my main job is in seismology. seismology. Mm -hmm. um, Almost I part of the group, the, the group of uh, monitoring. But uh, for me, it's a good opportunity because I am working more than 23 years. So the experience is very important because it's in order to share the experience that they have, what they are doing, and also uh, is uh, we have an open door in order maybe in the future to contact them to support. There's, there's a component of what I call science diplomacy, and that is, is sharing information, building relationships with other countries. They're such great friends that, uh, of course, in the evening after a hard day's work, mm -hmm. either in the class or in the field, they enjoy playing frisbee or soccer or going for a swim. So the sense of camaraderie is, is wonderful. We're building friendships not just between the United States and these other nations, but between the member nations themselves. So it goes beyond just the hazard, the humanitarian effort, to a, to a political effort as well, to build relationships. Yeah, I can come here, but like sharing with them, um, you making friends from other countries is, is just the best. <laughs> Mount St. Helens has definitely been a favorite part, partly because I've never been here myself. I've been all over the world, but I just never did get to Mount St. Helens, and your volcano is magnificent. I really enjoy being here, and the students feel the same. It's a beautiful place, and um, beautiful volcanoes, and well, it's amazing. And I mean, I wish the national park in my country do this, like the same thing. It's like, yeah, the 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 mindset is just different